Hey, I'm Joe. This is a mini lesson on blades, specifically circular blades that we use on power saws. You might think, yeah, they're round. They've got uh, tips on them and teeth and we cut with them. There's a lot more science and engineering to these guys, so let's get right into it. You'll find a few common blade sizes. One would be seven and a quarter. This is typical for, say, a circular saw. You'll find a 10 inch blade. A lot of miter saws on the smaller end will take a 10 inch blade. You'll also find a 12 inch version of a miter saw. One of the biggest blades I've ever seen was a finished carpenter I worked with. He had an Atachi miter saw with a 15 inch finished blade on it. So blades come in different sizes and of course the tool has to be sized and powered to drive that blade. So why do we have a seven and a quarter blade? That's a really weird measurement for the diameter of the blade. Well, that gives us three and, a, and an eighth to the center of the arbor hole. But we're actually, with, if you look at your base plate, it's gonna set you even further down from that center hole. So we don't get the full depth of that blade. A circular saw will cut uh, with a square cut about two and a half inches with the base plate set as high as you can get it. The reason for the seven and a quarter is that when you set that circular saw at a 45 degree bevel, the amount uh, at, at full depth with this blade, you can still cut through a two by material, which is an inch and a half thick. That's a very deep cut and that's the maximum amount of material that can be cut at that angle. I mentioned an arbor hole. Let's talk about parts of a saw, starting with the arbor hole. The arbor shaft of any saw will go through this hole. This is a standard 5 8 hole that fits on a 5 8 arbor shaft. And you might have another option. You might have a saw that needs a diamond arbor shape. This particular blade it can be used on either a round 5 8 arbor, or you can knock out this diamond shape. It's called a knockout and then use this on a tool that needs that shape to fit on it. The reason for the diamond knockout is because it will keep the blade from spinning. Typically, more powerful saws require that so that it locks in with the motor better. Blades come in two thicknesses. You'll have a full kerf, which is a eighth inch kerf blade, or a thin kerf, which is smaller. We talked about kerf in an earlier mini lesson, and kerf is basically the width or notch that the saw cuts into a piece of material when it's cutting. And a thin kerf and a full kerf blade are obviously different when you look at them. And the full kerf blade, it's much more rigid. It requires a heavier duty saw, more powerful saw to run it, a lot more mass in the blade. A thin kerf blade, will uh, can be turned with a much smaller, say, job site tool, and it does not offer us the, that rigidity or, uh, or that vibration control that the full kerf does. We all know that blades have teeth on them, and the count of the teeth or number of teeth on any blade is really important. You might think that more is better when we're talking about tooth count. That's not always true. What you can uh, take to the bank is that more teeth generally means a finer cut or a more quality cut. Less teeth will often cut faster. Each one of the teeth on a blade is made of a special metal called carbide. It's hardened and they are attached with brazing to each one of these points. They will have a specific angle on them and they're ground to be precision knives. So this is a 40 tooth blade. I have 40 pieces of carbide on here that are precision ground to make really fine cuts. In front of every one of these teeth on this blade is what's called a gullet. A gullet is a sort of a round shaped cutout that is designed to help remove material as it's being cut. One problem with a blade is that it has to get rid of that material or it's going to cause problems for the blade to spin in, in the kerf while it's cutting. The bigger the gullet, the more material can be removed from the cut, which means the cut can work faster. As, as you add more teeth, you have less room for gullets. So the gullets get smaller, therefore the material cannot be removed as fast and the cut gets slower. So between your tooth count and your gullet, this is going to change the speed that the blade can cut. 
Let's compare gullets on two different blades. This is a general purpose blade. It has 40 teeth on it. Here is a 60 tooth blade. So I've added 20 teeth. Look at the difference in size between these gullets and these. This is just a function of the shape or size of the blade and the number of teeth. So we have the deepest gullet we can have for this many teeth. This will slow down this blade. This is a fine finish cut blade. So we expect it to cut slower. We're going to use it slower. But keep in mind, that's the compromise when we're talking about gullets and teeth count. The hook angle also changes how a blade cuts. The hook angle has to do with this carbide tip and how far forward it's pitched or backwards based on the uh, radius of any blade. So as you can see, this tooth here, if we were to draw a line from the center out, is pitched forward of our radius. The hook angle changes how aggressive the cut is with any saw. So this blade here with a forward hook angle will be a much more aggressive cut. It, it will be a little harder to control this cut, especially with certain power tools. The more or, or the less the hook angle and even a negative hook angle can make the cut much more controlled. Once again, it's less aggressive, so we're getting that slower cut. So you have to decide with your blades, do you need more control or more speed? I talked about how we have to grind all of these carbide teeth to a special angle. There's several angles. We're going to look at some illustrations of these angles. This, is a, this would require uh, an extreme close-up, and sometimes a, an illustration would be better, starting with our flat top tooth. This is uh, a square cut tooth. It's great for rip cuts, and as this tooth moves through the material, it's going to clean out that kerf completely. Let's look at the next one. This is an alternating beveled top tooth cut. These teeth are angled to one side and the other. What this makes is a knife edge that cuts either side of the kerf at the same time. Every other tooth on this saw would be angled to the left or to the right. So this tooth here is angled to the right. I don't know if you can see that on your camera. This tooth is angled to the left, this one to the right. This is a much better arrangement for cross cuts. So we have the flat top tooth for rip cuts. This is a good arrangement for cross cuts. And cross cuts are more difficult than rip cuts in a way to get that quality cut that you want. You're cutting across the wood grain and a lot of times you get tear out. And tear out is a condition that doesn't happen in rip cuts, only in cross cuts, it can look nasty and rough. And sometimes you need a cleaner cut. That's where this alternating bevel tooth will come in handy. So now we're looking at blades and what is their purpose? What cut are you doing? How do you choose a good blade for whatever you're doing? If you're uh, using a tool that is mainly for rip cuts, say a table saw, you would use a rip blade. A ripping blade will have fewer teeth on it. It'll have larger gullets. Think about a rip cut, it's a long continuous cut, uh, high demand on the saw. We need a blade that can do that work. I went to Craftsman to pull up this image. So this is a good example of a general purpose ripping blade. A cross cut blade is going to increase the number of teeth on it, probably up to 60 to 80 for a fine cut blade. It will also alternate the angle of the teeth. That's that alternating top be bevel grind on those teeth. You can get a much finer cut out of this in that cross cut situation. Diablo makes high-end blades. Uh, and I was looking for an un unusual type of blade, so we went and got this image from them. This is called a combination blade. So we're taking aspects of our rip blade and our cross-cut blade, and we're combining them into one blade. There are certain situations where you need a saw to do both, and a combination blade can do this. The unusual thing about a combination blade is going to combine groups of teeth, and it has four teeth that are alternating bevels on the tips, and then it's going to add one more tooth that is a flat top tooth. So all of these are spinning and they're doing their job for what they need to do, either rip cuts or cross cuts, and this makes for a blade that can do both. And it does a decent job of both, but there is a compromise when you add these features all into one blade. Always remember that blades have multiple teeth and every one of them is a sharp knife. 
Be careful when you're handling them. Take all of this information we've gone over today and think about it when you're using a power tool and cutting something with a circular blade later on in the field. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.